All right, summer's over and we're back. Let's find out what's going on in Simcoe County's Waterloo region. From the Niagara region. In the Hamilton market. In the Durham region. We only have 639 new listings. Our city is growing like crazy, but the number of listings and the number of volume of sales does not compute with how many people are coming and staying in Waterloo region. Something's got to give. 5.9 months of inventory, which has been trending upwards in a big way since December. We are in a buyer's market, big time. Lots of room to negotiate as a result of this. Average sale price, you can see uh, definitely trending downward still as well. But I think this will be the final trough before the craziness. We've got the phone ringing off the hook. A little frightening to see is the number of new listings coming to market because we're also seeing prices come down as well. Typically, we expect inventory to go up and prices to come down. But here we have the reverse of what's happening. Stick around, guys. This is just the beginning. Welcome back to the Canadian Real Estate Channel. I'm Adam J.D. Martin, your host, and we took the summer off, but we're back with our market updates. And I think you're gonna be really excited to jump into the stats as we look through the various markets across Ontario and see what's coming for us in the fall markets. First, we're gonna step off and hear from Zach Britton from Phipps Britton about the Kitchener-Waterloo market update, where I think you're gonna be a little bit surprised about the numbers across the summer and the fact that there's almost no multifamily being transacted at all in the Tri-Cities. Prices have been holding and there's not really a ton of listings. So it's a pretty interesting market update. Stick with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Zach Britton here with Phipps Britton Real Estate in Waterloo Region. And we are gonna get into July numbers for Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge Real Estate and we're gonna tease what we see coming up into August and September. July numbers are in, which is the middle of August now, ladies and gentlemen. We only have 639 new listings. That's more than we had last year, but we're 16.5% below our 10-year average. Guys, our city is growing like crazy, but the number of listings and the number of volume of sales does not compute with how many people are coming and staying in Waterloo Region. Something's got to give. Next up, average sale price. This is across all market segments in Waterloo Region, 782000 Now, that's down year over year, 1.6%. We've had a lot of fluctuations, some big months up, some big months down in the last 12 months. Year over year, 1.6% less. And then months of inventory. This is the good one. 3.3 months of inventory. Now, if you've watched the videos before, you know inventory for detached homes, townhouses, and condos have fluctuated a ton. There's more townhouse listings, 85% increase in townhouse listings, but detached listings and condo listings are staying a little bit more steady. This is the first month in at least a few months that inventory hasn't risen. Now, days on market, on average, 22 days on market. This figure is skewed because of the way that the data is collected. But generally speaking, if you're selling a property, 30 to 60 days is very, very common depending on your situation. Last but not least, the spicy ratio, down a little bit to 102.4%. This is the ratio of the original listing price to what the properties are selling for. So typically, on average, in one of the region, listings are selling for 2.4% above the original price that they list at. Things are still a little spicy here, ladies and gentlemen. And before I let you go, one more quick slide. This is average sale price for all of Waterloo Region, all properties. 10 years ago, we were at 332. Before we had our crazy bump up in 21, 22, we are at 761. We are still a hair above that at 782,000 for average sale price. Just for a little bit of perspective on where we're at here in Waterloo Region. You guys want more on this, more on deals that we see here in Waterloo Region and trends that we're seeing for investors, buyers, and sellers. Check out the full-length video on the Canadian Real Estate Channel live now.
Hope you guys enjoyed that update from Zach. I personally was really interested to find out that there was almost no multifamily selling. Make sure you guys jump into the deep dive video with us where we really unpack that. We talk about some of the trends that we think we're going to see in the fall market. Now, come with me as we talk to Colby in the Barry market. We really unpack what's going on in Barry, and I think you're going to be surprised to hear about some of the development fees that he was shocked to learn about after he got into a project. Let's go find out about that. All right, summer's over and we're back. Let's find out what's going on in Simcoe County, specifically Barrie and Aurelia. I am Colby Marshall and uh, we're with EXP Realty and we have a construction building company, MCIS. And uh, we're just going to dive into a couple quick stats here and uh, find out what's going on in the Simcoe County area. Barrie stats, uh, we got the average sale price of detached homes, still on a little bit of a decline, but I guess... Summer has been slow. Everyone's been on vacation enjoying the nice weather, so it's pretty seasonal, but uh, we're thinking this is going to be the big trough before the craziness of the fall start. Number of detached listings is slowly declining. You can see that since May, uh, you know, kind of peaked in June, and then the number of listings have started to slowly come down, which is diminishing, which is great. So inventory is sloping a little bit downwards. That's great for people that are looking for the final couple deals of the real estate being on sale in Simcoe County. Average sale price, you can see uh, definitely trending downward still as well, but I think this will be the final trough before the craziness. We've got the phone ringing off the hook, people listing their houses, getting ready for sale for the fall market. Hopefully another interest rate coming up. It's going to be a good busy fall. Don't miss the boat. Right now, we're still seeing stuff come under, you know, 10, 15% under value, under list price. You got to know your areas, know your market, but uh, we're going to see some strong returns coming up here and some good deals still to be had before these interest rate hikes put some market into craziness. Quick little jump over to Aurelia, just up the road a little bit, 20 minutes. Same kind of deal. Average sale price still de declining. A little bit again this will be the final trough before the interest rate hikes really kick in in the fall and into the winter so keep your eyes out if you haven't jumped into a deal yet get a hold of us we're having phone ringing off the hook getting ready for the fall number of detached listings actually declining here again as well so you can tell that you know a lot of the inventory is getting chewed up you can see it trending down this is going to put listings through the roof when kids go back to school after labor day long weekend Things are going to get wild. September 4th is the next interest rate reduction, hopefully. So buckle up. I think it's going to be a busy fall. List to sale price ratios you can see here. You have some great deals to be had in Aurelia. A lot of older inventory that's been sitting. They're going 15 20% on their list price. This is going to be the end of this fairy tale story. So if you haven't bought a deal, you haven't got tied into something, a conversion, a severance, any of that, come out. Get educated on what we're doing and uh, definitely tune into our full video and uh, find out about the four units per lot and vary how we're making big dollars, big returns. We hope to see you there. Make sure you turn in to the deep dive video with Colby and I where we really unpack that double dip from the city. I think it's a really egregious way to capture more money and fees from people that are trying to follow the plan of the city and actually get some density in. So while the numbers or maybe not so surprising and buried to be kind of flat, I think you're going to be really surprised to hear us unpack that development fee in the deep dive video. Now come with me for a discussion with Kayla Smith where we look at the Niagara region. Kayla's got a really interesting interactive tool that she unpacks with us in the deep dive video, so make sure you tune into that as well. What's up, YouTube? It's Kayla Smith from the Niagara region and I'm back after a hiatus and I'm super stoked to be here to share July stats in August. So let's jump right in so I can share these numbers with you. They're a bit wonky. So number of new listings, 1,090. It's quite a bit. We've been trending upward obviously since December, which is seasonal. The median price is 650, which is actually down 30,000 from June, but lots of people go away in the summer. So don't pay too much attention to this. If you're gonna pay attention to any number that I'm gonna give you today, it's this months of inventory. 5.9 months of inventory, which has been trending upwards in a big way since December. We are in a buyer's market, big time. Lots of room to negotiate as a result of this. 
but median days on market 26. So things are still selling relatively quickly, but still lots of time to get out there and search and take your time in doing so. And then the sales to list price ratio is 97.3%, which means things are selling close to where they're listed, but it also means that things are being listed appropriately. So keep that in mind. Now, definitely join us in the longer video so we can go through some Niagara region tools. So I've been through Niagara, Niagara Navigator before, which I'm gonna go over again, but the region just released a new tool. So you have to check the other video out to see that. Of course, we're gonna go through some deals and we're also gonna talk about some commercial opportunities. And that means multifamily, but also commercial in the sense of mixed use, retail, all that good stuff. So definitely come check Adam and I out while we discuss the deep dive. All right, I know you weren't that surprised that the numbers were flat in the Niagara region. And unfortunately, we have more of the same coming up for you in the Hamilton area. The numbers have been super flat, but in our deep dive video, Abdella from Rebel Realty explains to us how he's been able to create a ton of opportunity by adding value through the use of additional dwelling units and adding more rent to the existing inventory that they have in their portfolio and the portfolio of their clients. So I hope you guys will stick along with us as we jump into that journey through Hamilton and continue the rest of our video. Hey everyone, it's Abdella Madge back with the Canadian Real Estate Channel. It's been a little while. Pumped to be back on, be chatting numbers, rental rates, some live opportunities, some case studies. Let's show you guys what we went up to with our investors here in the Hamilton market, what numbers look like. And I'm telling you, if you're a buyer, if you're looking to get into the market, looking to grow your portfolio, you do not want to miss this episode. So let's do a dive into the numbers. We are Rubber Realty out of Hamilton Grimsby. We house about 40 agents, keen focus on the investment side here in Hamilton. And now the numbers. Showing you guys back to April, since the last time we were on, talk about April to May, uh, even boots on the ground, we felt you know a, a steady presence with the amount of sales activity. You can, and if you look further down, your res residential average price points hung around 817, 818, so very consistent month over month. Days on market did drop a bit, you know, signaling buyers coming out to, to, to swallow off the inventory. And then June hits might look a little bit odd as you know, sales activity went way down. Average days on market came up just a slight touch, but the average, the residential average uh, price came up by a decent buck. And you can see all the green arrows, which are year over year. And this way we can show you guys what's been going on as well, month over month for the last four months. But my, the main objective here is to show you guys out there the transition in statistics here. Uh, and I, I can see it, boots on the ground here. It is as clear as day. As much as we wanted this market to pick back up, it, the market never lies. It is now you know, shifting into uh, um, a bit of a you know, downward trend. You can see the residential average price. I would, that's the most you know, glaring number in the entire slide. It's come down considerably. I'll tell you out there, this is exactly what the market needs. Again, no, no one has crystal ball. We don't know exactly where it's going to go. We're just taking a month by month. But I would say as a buyer, end user, investor, uh, somebody that's a more, you know, a less of a novice investor as well on the commercial side, there's some great opportunity out there. Sellers are willing to, to structure deals uh, as long as, you know, you're going in with, with uh, the right power team. Stick around, guys. This is just the beginning. I'm going to dive into some live opportunities here with Adam. We're going to be talking about some uh, something that's on the market right now that's got a bit of a twist to it. A couple of recent case studies, everything three, four plus units uh, in future intensification. So super pumped to chat with it and uh, we'll see you guys in a sec. Now follow along as we take you on a journey to the Durham region with Saman Habibi from the DR Real Estate Group. Simon's got some great information for us today, some fantastic stats and some actually kind of confusing stats. He's got a ton of listings and not a lot of sales. What does that usually make for? Well, you're about to find out. Follow along. Hey 
Welcome back to the Canadian Real Estate Channel, everyone. My name is Simon Habibi, and I'm a local real estate agent here in the Durham region. And today we're going to be talking about the real estate data here in the Durham region. I'm going to show you what is going on from the months of June to July and what we can expect going forward. All right, guys, so the data is out for the month of July, and let's talk about it. What's been really exciting to see and a little frightening to see is the number of new listings coming to market. As you can see here, the number of new listings, as we were expecting in previous months, was going up, but now from June to July has come down, which is a little shocking because we're also seeing prices come down as well. Typically, we expect inventory to go up and prices to come down, but here we have the reverse of what's happening. Now the culprit in all this is active listings. If you take a look at my chart here, I'm comparing January to July of 2023 versus January to July of 2024. And as we can see in the first seven months, active listings are up 47%. And as a result, this is having a major impact on prices and prices for the first time have dropped approximately, you know, five to 8% def depending on the different regions that we're looking at. All right, so what does this mean for you as a home buyer or as a home seller? As a home seller, you need to be very realistic with what you're trying to achieve. You know, because active listings are up at this moment, you have to make sure that the product you're putting out is the best product compared to everything else that's out there. You need your product to stand out and, uh, and be memorable for anyone who's looking and is in the market. And as a buyer, this is your opportunity to get in right now because prices have been reduced. Prices have reduced, you know, five to 6%, five to 8% depending on the different areas uh, of the market. And this is your opportunity to go in, not only get a discount, but go in and get a safe purchase. You can have your financing clause and you can have your inspection clause to make sure that you're protected all, all around. Make sure you come back and you watch the full video as we're going to be doing a deep dive into these numbers and tell you what exactly all these numbers mean and what we can expect to see in the coming months. Thanks for the great updates, Simon. I really appreciate you being super direct with the numbers and giving us a great explanation as to why you think the purchase price is actually slacking while the active listings keep on increasing. And if you want to hear more updates from Simon, make sure you watch our deep dive video where we jump in. We do a ton of talking about the stats themselves and we really speculate as to why those numbers are happening the way that they are. And we talk about the different segments of real estate inside the market and what's going on with the numbers there. All right, so I know that wasn't our most exciting numbers update, but I hope that you realize that all of the people that we brought on the channel to do this update with us are real people doing real things. And I think they demonstrated truly what it means to have a power team. And I think if you click through those deep dive videos, you're really gonna understand how people on this channel are able to turn problems into profits by finding opportunities and creating the best out of the current market that we're in. You can't time the market and it's extremely hard to find the perfect deal just laying around. And in these deep dive videos, each one of our power team investors, experts, the people that you heard from today, they've detailed how they've actually been finding massive profits in these flat markets. So we'll see you back here next month for the next market update where our experts are gonna bring new numbers, more news and new updates in their markets. We'll see you there.